thing. There's an alley. I take it. For all that lovely Hell's Lager you drink around the place, maybe. Let's give you a proper look. Beer. Fresh beer in here. Fresh beer. Just by Kentish Town West train station. It's grown a lot bigger. When I first came here, it was just a little arch there, or here, I think. Now look at it. Right. It's a great place to be and I seriously miss it. Past what was once my old gym on the right hand side. In the last episode we were in Maida Vale where I lived in that top floor flat with its own balcony. And after living there a while, maybe six months, eight months, can't remember exactly, I needed to move. And this time I really did want to move further in. And Kentish Town is where I ended up. So just about in the beginning of my time here in this area, this building, can you guess? This building was a pub. <laughs> and yeah, not long after I got here, it became flats. It actually took a little while to get turned into flats, but like everything, it did happen. And yeah, you can see it was a pub, clearly. I mean, look, it's got pub written all over it. The Carlton, Warden Road, rather. It's even got the sign still up. So there's another failed pub. And that is like three within a couple of hundred meters of each other. So, there's another one. Anybody into photography? Anybody know about famous photographers? Because opposite that place, we've got Anne Roy House. It was an old rundown building when I first came here. And of course, it's now is the home of famous photographer Rankin. I don't quite get his work personally. I think it's more of a fashion thing, not something for me. Grafton Road was my home for something like nearly 10 years. Yep, when I got this place, this was the one for me. The area is fantastic. Love living here, great vibe. Really cool place. So we were here earlier, you remember this pub? Ex-pub, whose name I can't remember. And we're gonna go up to where I lived, just here on the right, past the school. So back to our story. So in the last episode, I was living in that top floor flat in Maida Vale. I had my own balcony and a lookout close to the Paddington Recreation Ground, very interesting spot. But it wasn't for me long term, I knew that. I think I stuck it out there for six months or eight months or something. But why was that? Well, it didn't have any vibe for one thing. It was decorated like an old lady's house. It was a bit frilly, had flowery wallpaper. And it wasn't for me long term, I knew that. Besides, I couldn't have a motorbike. I'd keep a motorbike there, which is what I really wanted. So it was time to move on. So after much searching and looking around, I eventually came to see a place here on Grafton Road. It turned out to be pretty good. The house at the time was pink in color, slightly like a light pink color. And it was one double bedroom being offered in this uh, three-story house. And it was a massive double bedroom. It was on the middle floor up there. I think there was a full change of people going on at the time the guy was letting it out. And as soon as I saw it, I thought, yep, this is for me. This is the one. And I took it. I could get my motorbike, I could park it in the front, and I could start life all over again. <laughs> and it was a great start. Got some new friends in, met new people when they moved in. Yeah, all things were starting to pick up and go well. One of the reasons I wanted to be in this area is that my work had moved to out of town. It was further north and I had to get a train there. But to get a train there, I could actually get, put my bike on a train and head out. And to do that, I could roll down to King's Cross. And that from here is pff, it's nothing. It's just a, a quick roll down the road, maybe a kilometer or two. So that's what I would do every day. Roll down to King's Cross, stick my bike on the train, and head out of town. So you can imagine after 10 years living here, I met some great people. Loads of people came and went. Lots of different friends, people moving in, moving out. Uh, there was lots of parties. It's got a big roof terrace at the back, small garden three big double bedrooms. It's just an epic place to live. To the point where at one point we even tried to buy the place. <laughs> it was a bit of an unrealistic move, but it was worth a try. It was crazy money. It's changed hands now. I think it's been sold for a vast amount of money. It was definitely worth a try, but I enjoyed my time here. It was very good times. So earlier on, we popped out from just here, just around the corner there, right there. 
Kentish Town City Farm. I do believe that once upon a time, not in my time, but this used to be a pub called the Mitre. That's right. So that's, I don't know, is that four or five pubs on one street all closed and turned into flats? Don't make it easy for us cyclists. It's almost like they don't want us here. They don't, let's be honest. Let's dive down here, cut through Oak Village and see how it looks. Quiet little residential street, nice little two-story houses. So this is a bit of a rough estate. Right on the edge of all the nice stuff. That's the old oak, we were here earlier. Back on my gospel oak, train station. So I need to charge my battery for a bit, so I'm gonna pull over, have a cup of tea, and recharge for a while. So I've just taken five minutes out here to recharge some batteries. This is Parliament Hill, a lovely little spot I'm very familiar with. I used to come up here quite a lot in the summer and the good weather. Just relax, read a book, sit on a sarong, take your time. And here we've got the, the athletics track. And there we can see the city of London itself and the town centre, not too far away. Just a few kilometres away. But just down here, in the foreground, low level, we've got the famous Parliament Hill Lido. The outdoor swimming pool, open all year round, unheated. <laughs> I miss this area. I always do. I always miss this area. You're probably wondering why I ended up moving. Well, maybe I'll explain that in a later one, but we'll see. So what we have behind me is the famous Parliament Hill Lido, opened on the 20th of August 1938 at a cost of £34,000. The pool inside is 200 foot by 90 foot or 61 metres by 27 metres. So the Lido itself was designed to reduce shade and trap heat, which I can confirm it does because I've been in there when the weather's not been that amazing and the walls all around the outside actually keep the heat in. At the time, there were Lidos being opened all over, all over London in the area, and this was the biggest and most expensive of them all. The large pool, which holds 650,000 gallons of water, is completely unheated, and is open all year round. Not all of them are. So when you get one of those really hot days in the summer, you know, your 25, 30 degree days, I've been up here, it gets so busy, so crazy busy. So you can go in, look, it is open today. It's funny, this little bit here, look, I can remember once we bought a, a big three-man tent, still got it actually, and our garden, well, we didn't have a garden, we couldn't test it. So we brought it up here to set it up, and we set up this massive tent, <laughs> and I think the police or the parks authorities or someone came along just to check that we weren't moving in. <laughs> and I had to explain that, no, no, we just bought it and we're just checking that we can set it up before we go on a camping trip. In the meantime, up and over. Nice. Oh, look at this. I get a ramp. I enjoy these ramps. Right, we're gonna head down to the high street before we head off, maybe somewhere else. Let's power down. Back through Oak Village, I think. Bit of a shortcut. I'm not hanging about. Do what you want. Bang. Ooh, what's this? I'm curious. This is good. Down the block. I 
Steve Urban Playground. Yeah, skills. And we've got steps, ramp, steps, ramp. I spent eight or ten years here, past the old house, just there. Coming up past Rankin's place, Anne Roy, right there, under the railway arches, the place for me I used to get my bikes fixed. It's gone on home road. way to the recycling place I would say and this is Holmes Road that wasn't there when I was here that wasn't there that wasn't there that wasn't there but this even wasn't here something to do with the Hadids this one rather large Kentish Town police station here really big building right up and down the high street I think all right play with the traffic on the high street so this high street Obviously is very cool, very desirable, lots of nice shops and you know what, lots of expensive and very nice tasty bakeries like Gales, Earth Natural Foods, a really nice Mediterranean shop, yeah it's a nice high street I have to say. If you live here it can get expensive because everything is so lovely, tasty food, all the organic stuff, proper fresh bread. Yeah, nice stuff everywhere here. There's always something being built. There's always something being knocked down, something else being built in this place. It's just how it is. So we just, we're not gonna go too far down here. On our right is Kelly Street, where we were earlier. And further on our right here, we've got the tattoo shop, Flaming Eight. little back alley, just the way I like it. Feels like Victorian times. Do you ignore the modern stuff? Yeah, this will work. We have been talking about pubs in the area. Well, this is a, a real well-known one. Quinn's Bar, blue and yellow, looking real rough these days. Okay, coming from Camden direction, heading towards Kentish Town High Street. Lots going on around here, busy little area. So just on our left again is that Kentish Town South Tube Station, which just never was a tube station. My tattoo studio there, Greek Orthodox Church. And as we hit the high street proper, so we're gonna cruise up the high street, show you what it looks like. Oh. Ding. What's happening here? I'm struggling. I think I need to take the lead, show them the way. Alrighty. Gales bread shop, bread shop number one. We've been chased down by a big truck. Bread shop number two. <laughs> a pub that keeps changing hands. So I'll show you one of my favorite pubs. I love this place. I don't know why. Yeah, so just across the way here we've got the uh, pub called the Assembly House. One of my favourite pubs in the area. It's nothing that special, it's a nice looking building. But um, mainly because in the afternoons it gets beautiful sunlight streaming in from that side and it just lights the whole place up. I mean, it is a classic looking building actually. I do like it. It's 
sort of place that gets absolutely crammed full when there's a gig on just up the road of the, the old forum. This place gets full. And you've got the old coach stand here. So this is now a flower stall and coffee shop, what have you. But back in the day, you can see that these would have been where the coaches would have waited and dropped people off coming to and from London. So, we are across the other side of the road from Kentish Town now, and we're gonna have a proper look at this another time. But while we're passing through, let's just go this, through this lovely little area, get more wonderful color. Look at this. Look at the aces in the garden. Beautiful coloured houses. It's a really nice spot. One of the better places to live in Kentish Town if you're going to be here. Really nice. Now, there used to be a classic pub just up the road, and let's see if it's still open because it's really well known, really popular, proper like sort of village pub in some ways. Here it is, the pineapple. An absolute classic. Still going strong. A pub that hasn't closed, that's great the pineapple. More colours. Lots of colours everywhere. Be nice if someone let me in. Let's see. Hey! And we're off. So this is an area now called Dartmouth Park. It's not strictly Kentish town, it's just uh, another little... So we're, we're effectively in Islington now, I think. Pretty sure this is Islington Borough, which is the next borough to Camden. So another nice little spot. A few little hills around here. Different sort of neighborhood. It's got no real high street to speak of. Got a couple of corner pubs here and there. Yeah, nice area. Just gonna power up this hill. Get it over with. Beat everybody else. Oh, another great pub. It's the theme of pubs on this trip. What's this one called? Lord Palmerston, that's right. Alright, this hill we can go down. It's good news. Stay there, Volvo. You listen, well done. So what did you think of Kentish Town? Scuzzy enough? Not scuzzy enough? It's got a right mix, isn't it? It's got a bit of both. It's got the, the fancy stuff and the nice houses. And it's got a hell of a lot of estates and back streets and back alleys. So right now, we're heading through Archway and we're gonna tackle Archway Hill and the Archway Bridge. Let's give you a look what that's all about on the way up. Always be on the lookout for assholes in Audis. There's one. It's all in an Audi. They everywhere. So maybe you can see this bridge up ahead of us. This is the Archway Bridge. Known famously for suicides, sadly. They've erected some sort of railings now. Just to stop people doing it. it. Must have been horrible if you were in your car along here. And a body land. Still pushing my way up the Archway Hill here. It's quite a grind. I don't know how long it is. It's a Strava segment. Probably a kilometre and a half, two kilometres maybe. I don't do too bad, but my days of chasing KOMs are long gone. Damn, caught by the lights. One down. I won't go the wrong side, they'll upset you so much. But I will go this side of this car, because why not? I haven't got a number plate. Oh God. What they could have got a bus through there. So there's the park coming up on our left. Let's see what the traffic's like. Huh? Pretty clear. Got me an X3 to worry about. What's he doing? Come on, buddy. Boot it. Just a little bump. Oh, so slow. So we got Bounds Green in the next kilometer. Next stop. It was nice to revisit some of those old haunts, I can tell you. So I will see you next time somewhere on Scuzzy London.
the day I die.